So Nevada King intercepts 1.11 grams per ton gold equivalency over 25 meters at Silver Park, and this is near surface over a broad mineralized horizon. This is two kilometers west of the main Atlanta resource. That is a significant hit. Uh, it's got the right geochemistry. The hit was in the volcanics and at the unconformity contact and extends down into the uh, dolomite basement rock as well. We scattered our holes all over the district, widely spaced uh, anywhere from 200 to 500 meters apart. Now, when we hit with 21, 21 geochemically looks just like these hits west of the resource zone. At that point, we started getting exciting because this is the first evidence, direct evidence we have of some sort of a geochemical tie between the Silver Park region and the resource zone. The implication here is that these two different portions of the property formed at the same time from the same mineralizing event that produced the resource zone. This is important because when you're dealing with a fairly substantial resource like the Atlanta resource zone, when you find another part of the property that has the same characteristics, then you've got very good potential for finding a similar deposit in that area. So from phase two drilling at the Atlanta resource, we know that the unconformity is where the hosted mineralization is. And from drilling our resource, we know that it obviously gets deeper and we thought that it continued to get deeper. From today's release and the findings that we've had from phase three, that's actually not the case. What we have over about a three kilometer span is this unconformity becomes shallower and comes near surface. And this is exciting because again, we know mineralization is hosted at the unconformity at the resource. Now we're dealing with the same unconformity, the same style of mineralization, but much more shallow at Silver Park. And what's exciting about this as well is through geochemistry and the work that we've done with our drilling data, it does seem that these two areas could be quite related in terms of the volcanics, the intrusives, and obviously we know that the Paleozoic unconformity is related. So what this tells us is that there's a strong possibility of a satellite deposit over by Silver Park that could be coeval or have been deposited around the same time and from the same source as the Atlanta resource. So this news release is so important for Nevada King because we already have a high grade structure and a high grade engine to start the project with the Atlanta resource. And what we're looking for now is can we find another satellite deposit to complement that? It's at surface, Silver Park, and it starts just 18 meters at depth and extends down to 182 meters. So it's looking like another open pit oxide potential. And that's really what investors are looking to see right now and other corporates. They want to see, do you have a satellite deposit on the project? And can that complement to really drive the economics forward? This is greenfield exploration here. The fact that we are finding gold in a completely distinct district is pretty exciting for us. This intercept's exciting because really it's telling us a couple of things. It's telling us that mineralization continues well outside the resource zone, two kilometers away. It's also telling us that we're finding mineralization in the similar host rock, both at the unconformity of the volcanics and the Paleozoic units in silica breccia and strong silicification, as well as in the volcanic tufts just above it. Now, this is also similar to the West Atlantic Graben, where we have generally two zones of mineralization, one higher up in the volcanics, and then one at the unconformity. So there's a lot of parallels to this whole SP-21 and mineralization drilled at the resource. And this is the first time in our regional exploration that we've drilled a hole that is so similar. What it's telling us is that we have plumbing that is continuing well past the resource to Silver Park and around Silver Park. And it's also telling us that we're dealing with the same style of mineralization. So now it's just a matter of trying to trace that whole SP-21 into the right direction. Given our experience so far at Atlanta, once you tap into something like this, you usually have to poke around to try to find the structures that are providing the plumbing for the mineralization. And that's where you're going to find your higher grade. And you have to get close to those. You've got to get within 30, 40 meters of those things to see the grade pop up. 
Uh, the next phase is to scatter six reconnaissance holes over a 500 meter by 500 meter area to give us a, a feel for whether or not this has the kind of potential that would justify closer space drilling. If we see similar results to what we saw in the north extension target north of the resource zone, okay, then we can infill the gaps a little bit more so we can come up with a resource calculation. That's the other nice thing about this. If this does turn out to be something that's similar to the north extension target, we can very quickly put enough holes in this thing to come up with a good uh, resource approximation very quickly. It doesn't take us a long time, and it doesn't require a lot of deep holes. This is shallow. We're talking quick drilling. So with the success that we've had at Silver Park so far, we did decide to increase the regional drill program from 20,000 meters to 30,000 meters, and that was helped by closing a financing for 11.5 million Canadian, which will allow us to fully fund this next phase of drilling and to follow up with these exciting hits that we've had at Silver Park and really see if we can define a resource here. If you liken it to a baseball game, the first pitch was thrown to you. That's where we're at. That's grassroots exploration, not development drilling. That's what we're hoping for with any grassroots program. You're hoping for a hole like this that's going to give you an inkling that you're in the right area, okay? Not much.